Our first step in solving any stoichiometry problem is to make sure that we have a balanced chemical equation to describe the reaction. So we can see here that I've recorded a balanced equation for this particular reaction. We have sodium chloride in the aqueous state, that means it's dissolved in water, which is going to be reacting with aqueous silver nitrate. The products of this reaction are going to be a precipitate, that's silver chloride, and we are also going to form sodium nitrate, which is still going to remain dissolved in the water. One strategy that we can use to find out limiting and excess reactants in a stoichiometry problem would be to calculate how much product is going to be formed based on the starting amounts of the two different reactants. So I'm going to perform one calculation starting out with 0.25 grams of sodium chloride and determine how much silver chloride this will allow me to form. I'm going to perform a second calculation uh, based on the starting amount of silver nitrate. Again, to try to determine how much silver chloride will this allow me to produce in a reaction. My strategy for solving this problem is going to be based on utilization of the mole bucket. Because we know the starting mass of the two different reactants, we want to start here on the diagram. We know the mass of both sodium chloride and silver nitrate. Now using the molar mass of either of those two compounds, we can convert that uh, starting amount of a reactant to number of moles of a reactant. Uh, this allows us to work in the mole bucket. This is where we are going to use the ratios of products and reactants from a balanced chemical equation. So this is going to allow me to convert in my problem talking about reactant to talking about an amount of product. Uh, so this will allow me to calculate how much product, silver chloride, is going to be produced. And then I can use the molar mass of silver chloride to get back out of the bucket to calculate a mass of silver chloride that I would spec expect to have at the end of this reaction. So we've set up the stoichiometry uh, calculation using dimensional analysis. The top row here we can see that we're starting out with 0.25 grams of sodium chloride. Here in this step I'm using the molar mass of sodium chloride to determine how many moles of sodium chloride are available for this reaction. After doing this step I'm now in the mole bucket. I can use the ratio of reactant to products and this is going to allow me to say that one mole of sodium chloride allows us to produce one mole of silver chloride. That's in the bucket. Now my final step is to get back out of the bucket where I'm going to convert back to a molar mass. Uh, so to complete this step, I need to know the molar mass of silver chloride, which is 143.32 grams. Uh, based on this, I would say I can make 0.61 grams of silver chloride. Now we want to also evaluate how much we can make based on the starting amount of the other reactant, the silver nitrate. So that calculation is shown right here. We're starting with 0.25 grams of silver nitrate. We are converting to moles of silver nitrate. Then I'm using the ratio of silver nitrate to silver chloride. It is, again, a one-to-one -one ratio. Then using the molar mass of silver chloride allows me to calculate in this scenario that I should be able to make 0.21 grams of silver chloride. So we can't do both of these things. We can't, in this reaction, produce both 0.61 grams of silver chloride and at the same time produce only 0.21 grams of silver chloride. So when we're determining limiting reactants in this manner, we're always going to eliminate the result which produced the higher yield. So the 0.61 grams of silver chloride is not possible. This means my theoretical yield for this process would be 0.21 grams of silver chloride. And this is based on the starting amount of silver nitrate. So my limiting reactant in this case is the silver nitrate, AgNO3. The other reactant, sodium chloride, I have more than enough of that chemical. So the excess reactant will be the sodium chloride. This process works well for determining limiting and excess reactants. It also allows us to determine a theoretical yield. Now, the problem with this technique is it takes longer. If you're doing a problem-solving question at the end of an exam, this would be the strategy that I would recommend. If you're trying to answer a multiple choice question, however, I think you might want to use a different strategy that would be a little bit quicker. So here's what I would recommend in that case. 
we still want to know what is the balanced reaction for the process we're, we're looking at. So again, we have that at the top here. And I'd still want to consider also the molar masses of my two different reactants, 58.44 grams for the sodium chloride, 169.87 grams for the silver nitrate. In this case, because we have the exact same starting mass of both, we can actually just say, well, 0.25 divided by 58.44 is going to produce a larger number than 0.25 divided by 169.87. Because I will have a smaller number of moles of silver nitrate, and because the silver nitrate and sodium chloride will react in a one-to-one -one ratio, at that point I would know that the silver nitrate would be my limiting reactant.